Welcome back to H20 special relativity. So if there is a time dilation effect through to gravitational fields, then there's also a redshift to the gravitational fields. So a consequence of time dilation is a change in the light frequency. And I ask you to estimate the magnitude of this effect. And the example we wanna use is the one shown here. So you have a tower, which is not randomly, but 22 and a half meters tall and a light beam is sent down. Obviously the tower is built on this planet and there's, there's gravity is acting. Um, so there's, this is basically an accelerating um, reference frame. The length of the tower is again 22 meters and I would like you to just get a feeling how big can this effect be, the effect of redshift here. So please try to work this out. The way to, to think about this is first to say, okay, no, the light you know, the delta T for the light to travel um, is L divided by C. The speed of light is C, the length is L. The change in velocity is G acceleration times L divided by C. So the Doppler shift then is the frequency, the new frequency divided by the initial frequency. And that can be approximated by one plus delta V over C. So we find that it's one plus G times L over C square. Now, the speed of light is pretty fast, um, three times 10 to the, um, to the nine meter per second. And this distance is only 22 and a half meters. So we find that this is a tiny, tiny, tiny effect. But nevertheless, um, experimentalists at Harvard tested this effect. So Pound, Repka, and Snyder in the 1950s and, and 60s we're able to show this, this very tiny um, effect. If you want to know more about this, you can, for example, look up a small description in Wikipedia here. Um, but there's, there's some, quite some literature on those experimental tests uh, overall. 